everyone. Today we're going to make over this frame. I found it at a thrift store for $40. I'm going to make the frame look like raw wood and then it has some new art to put in the middle. So let's get started. It does have some pretty colors. It's just not quite my style. I'm going to go with something a little more light and airy. It does have this, it was kind of dirty, I need to wash it, but it has this um, texture on it that I'm going to try to sand off really quick. Okay, that's working really well. I'm gonna start painting the frame and the inside in flat finish in the color Burnished Clay. So I use this technique on quite a few projects so far on another set of frames on the nightstands in our bedroom as well as an antique cabinet. So I'm pretty confident that it will turn out the way I'm picturing. Oh my goodness, this brush has seen better days. It's okay, we're just gonna go with it. So this is like a, a clay color, and this will give us the groove. We're, I'm gonna use antiquing wax next to give it that raw wood look, and it's gonna settle in these lines to look more realistic. I'm also gonna go ahead and paint um, inside this too so that it won't bleed through to my new artwork. One thing I always say is that it's important to keep the strokes going in the same way like real wood does. So you want to go up and down and then side to side. Just keep it long strokes. Okay, now I'm starting to paint over this. If you were artistic, you could just paint this white and do your own painting. I'm not, so I'll show you what I'm going to do instead. I don't need this to be perfect. I just need it to not be so dark. almost done painting. I'm just going to go over a light second time so I get even coverage. Okay, now I'm going to start working on the artwork while this dries. I should point out, I thought it was pretty obvious, but maybe it wasn't, that this wasn't a real oil painting. It was just kind of made to look like it. It was just a print, so I didn't ruin anyone's original artwork. I totally missed a spot over there. Hold on. I have an hour until I pick the kids up at the bus stop. Doesn't mean I have to completely finish my project, but it would be good to be in a good stopping point. So let's talk about the print that's going to go inside. I am not all that artistic, so I had this large print. It's 30 by 40. Actually, I think it's, it's something like that. This is called a blueprint at Staples. Now, they don't want you printing this. They don't want you printing artwork on their blueprint printer because they think people will be dissatisfied with the quality because it's not, you know, it's not photo quality, but I just wanted this as something to give me an outline. So I'm going to take paints and I'm going to go over like some of these lines to make it look more realistic, but it was only $10 to print this. So I feel like that's a good deal. And when I picked it up, the lady said, are you um, using this for art? And I said, well, kind of. And she's like, oh, okay. And I just took it. <laughs> and left because I didn't need the lecture. But yes, yeah, so do know if you, it's only $10 and they don't accept really highly saturated photos. So since this is more of a, like a sketch, um, like I tried to upload a different photo and it, it was darker, darker colors. And it said this, it recognized it as a piece of art, like a photo. And so they would not print it. So that's that doing kind of like a, a paint by numbers kind of approach where right now I'm just doing the dark and this is the only junky brush I could find. <laughs> so I got this print, the digital file off of, I bought it from Etsy. You can also find some on the, in the public domain for free. This one was only, I think $3. There we go. For this next step, we're gonna use antiquing wax. This is in dark vintage and I have a cloth here and I'm gonna rub it in. It's the scary part, but the magical exciting part. So here we go. This is like the fourth project I think and it's not even, it's probably a fourth gone. So here's what I have kind of learned. Let's see if you can see. So I, I put a little in there 
and I kind of fold it in because I don't want this to be really dark. It just depends on how much you put on the cloth, but I want this to be kind of like a light wood. So, okay, this is always the nerve wracking part. All right, maybe I'll start on this side just to see. Yeah, it never disappoints. It's just such an amazing technique. It takes a little while to set, so you have time to work with it and rub it in and get an even tone. Now, if you want a more rustic look, you can add more and just do less rubbing. Okay, that took about 45 minutes, that's it, and I'm done. And I'll have to get to the rest of it tomorrow. Okay, it's a new day, I'm ready to get started. I'm going to kind of cut this so it fits just perfectly with just a little extra to fit inside here. So let's go. can't find any adhesive spray or anything like that and all my arsenal of spray cans. What if I just poke it in and hope for the best? Okay. It worked. So uh, it looks really good. I'm really happy with the project so far. So now I am gonna try carefully, maybe in a little spot, try it, this Mod Podge on top to see if I can get it kind of like sealed and maybe hardened up a little bit. One tip, I always keep some of these sponge brushes around. You can buy like a set of five at the Dollar Tree and you can touch up paint on the walls or do something like this. They're really great for crafts. There was a little bit of buckling in some spots where the Mod Podge got too heavy, so I just laid some books across and see if that helps. And here she is, all cleaned up and ready to hang. I actually did a blogging behind the scenes video while I was doing this, so you can see what it looks like while I'm actually making these videos. It's crazy, I'll tell you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.